Zia Haider Rahman was born in Bangladesh and came to England as a child. He went to Oxford to study maths, went on to study at Cambridge, Munich and Yale, worked for Goldman Sachs on Wall Street, then switched course, as you do, to become a human rights lawyer. Now he's changed tack again and written a novel. In the light of what we know is about Zafa, a man whose background and career sound very much like those of his creator. It's an astonishing first novel, an intellectual firecracker full of ideas about mathematics, class, choice, exile. Part of it set in Kabul in 2002, shortly after the US invasion. It contains one of the clearest descriptions I've ever read of the toxic financial instruments that caused the 2008 financial crash. And at its heart, it's about how difficult it is to know anything about ourselves or indeed anything else with any degree of certainty. Uh, Zia Haider Rahman, this is a very clever book with an awful lot of ideas in it. Let's start, though, with a, a fairly simple-sounding question. How far is Zafa you? <laughs> um, there are certainly quite a few similarities, um, biographically, between me and Zafa. Uh, we were both born in Bangladesh, both grew up in poverty, moved to the UK when we were small, lived in the projects, went to Oxford, and then went on to Wall Street and became human rights lawyers. But uh, that's the extent of uh, biographical similarity. Of course, I draw on my own experiences, and I think um, we, we write what we know. And you know a lot, quite clearly. Uh, there is an enormous amount of knowledge referenced in this book, uh, which one of the things that makes it so entertaining and stimulating. You got a very good review in the New Yorker magazine the other day, which talked about... Uh, what it called the intellectual pluripotency of the book. I had to look up pluripotency. It's a term from biology, and it means the potential of a cell to develop into more than one type of mature cell, depending on environment. Is that an apt word to use about your book, do you think? Um, well, I, it's interesting you say pluri, pluripotency. Um, it's, it's interesting that you, you find that definition. I'm immediately immediately thinking about its metaphoric value. I think it is apt. It's apt in many different ways, um, but not least of all that it suggests how we, uh, we, we come to be what we are very much because of our environment. There is genetics, but, but what's interesting is how people differ. Uh, well, one of the things that's interesting is how people differ uh, because of, of the conditioning of environment and in a certain respect that's one of the things that's explored in this novel, two people of differing class backgrounds who nominally have a lot in common. They're South Asian, they read maths at Oxford, they went into banking and yet their class backgrounds are, are such that and their upbringing is such that they have very different experiences of the world but also um, ways of viewing the world. Zafar and you both originate in Bangladesh, which was born in an exceptionally bloody and vicious war in 1971. How important is that uh, in, in the framework of the book, and also to, to people like you and, 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 and Zafar, who originated out of this sort of crucible? Well, this is one of the great mysteries of, of, of history. How, how does it... Uh... Of, of such of events of of that magnitude, how what is their lasting effect? Not just on a country, but on individual psyches, and also on the psyches of people one step removed, the next generation. Um, I don't want to give anything away, but certainly Zafa is fundamentally affected uh, by that war. There's uh, an event that conditions the whole of his life. Um, and, yeah, it's, it, I think it's one of the things I explore. But it's, it, it, at the same time, it remains a, a mystery. And I think that, that's the nature of the experience we all have of the impact of major events that are just a little beyond our horizon temporarily. 
Now, that's something that crops up a lot in this book, the understanding of things that are just beyond our horizon. The title, in the light of what we know, is drawn from a phrase of Zafar's. He's talking about the impossibility, actually, of yeah. understanding new ideas because we can only see them in the light of what we know already. Gödel's incompleteness theorem, a mathematical concept, relates to this. You, you refer to this a lot. In, mm. the, in the book, so just tell us who Gödel was and what, what that theorem is and why is it, why is it yeah, so important. Yeah. Um, the theorem is extraordinary in that it can be stated in plain language. and I, 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 I know that some mathematicians will wince at this, but they'll, 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 I know also that they'll go, go with me. Simply stated, it says there are things that are true that cannot be proven to be true. And this Zaffa finds terribly upsetting because for him, mathematics was a realm of certitude. It was the anchor. And this is a man who's rootless, who uh, you know, is struggling to find a place in the world. And he thought he'd found it in mathematics. Um, but the, the novel constantly explores this question of what is it that we can rely on? What, what is it that, you know, what do we think, what do we know, what, what do we think we know? Can we, can we trust our senses? Can we trust what we're hearing? Um, and, uh, and for Zaffa, the tragic conclusion or thesis that he drives towards is that knowledge only gets you so far. You've switched careers more than once, Wall Street banker to human rights lawyer, to novelist. Why turn yourself into a writer? Well, I, I'm not sure I uh, did it quite so calculatingly. It was uh, uh, for various reasons I found myself at a point in life where I simply just wanted to step off the treadmill and I did so and I went on a journey. I gave myself uh, a few years to travel from, travel across Europe and Asia and my journey was cut short midway, I, I, for deaths of people I cared about, meant that uh, my journey was cut short. And I found myself with time and an idea that had come into my head during that journey now came back and I just sat down to write it. Yahida Rahman, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Nick.